And I would say it was around when I got my five ounce bar at spot price and yeah. holding that, that, yeah, that, that was really cool. That was really cool. And I would say that's honestly when I got hooked on it. And Hey, welcome to the very good cast, also known as the GG Bullion podcast. My name is Lenny. I'm your host. And today we are looking into the mind of a new silver stacker. I have with me today, Lauren from the Logic and Vibes podcast. How are you doing today, Lauren? Good. Thank you for having me tonight. It's no problem. And just for the audience real quick, you know, we're going to get into the silver stuff very soon. Um, but just give us a short description of what your podcast is about. Sure. It's uh, me and my best friend of 25 years, and it's a lighthearted, conversational comedy podcast. So check us out. Yeah, and I will put the links to that in the description, and you can find it by searching Logic and Vibes on YouTube, Spotify, and on Podbean. So I guess um, the first question I would like to ask you is kind of before you started stacking silver, what was your outlook on, on silver and gold and I guess precious metals in general, but both in general and as an investment? Um, yeah, I mean, prior to stacking, I'm going to be honest with you, I kind of thought it was like a like a old way of investing. Um, I knew my grandpa had some silver and my grandma and my grandpa actually recommended me to invest. And I was just kind of like, oh, this is you know, this is kind of old school way of investing. And that was just kind of the way I viewed it. You know, I didn't, I didn't really understand it. And it wasn't really, well, we can get into that. But yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of my view at the beginning, just yeah. like an old school way of investing. I'm, I'm curious if when your, your grandparents, when they told you to invest in that, how, how much more would you be up if you did it when they told you to initially? <laughs> They told me that maybe back in 2019 or 2020. Okay. All right. I yeah, just, I'm just curious. I'm 24 years old. So I was new to investing in general. I would say pretty much came into like money, if you will, around mm -hmm. 2021. And that's when I really wanted to start investing. And I actually started in cryptos for a little bit, like Dogecoin yeah. and you know, I had a little bit of success there, but to be honest, it wasn't really my thing and the uncertainty of it all. And yeah, even after listening to your podcast, episode one, you guys talked about it and um, someone made a good point. Like anything that's man-made can also be taken down by man. And that's just yeah. why I kind of like the precious metals because it's, it's physically yours. You can hold it and yeah, it's, it's, it's undeniably yours. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, they truly are the very good ones. Like as I yeah. as be, has become my catchphrase, um, but yeah, and and all the industrial uses too. Like I, I mean, maybe maybe we'll talk about crypto a little bit later. I I don't want this whole podcast to keep talking about crypto, but um, no, but it was just a good point, and just yeah. you know, I I had started investing in that, and you know, it just it really wasn't for me to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Yeah, just on, I guess, on that topic, it's like, yeah, I've made some gains on crypto, but I also, I, you know, I put some into like random meme coins. And aside yeah. from like, aside from Dogecoin, which I made you know, good gains on and put it into silver, it's like, dude, all of those like went to zero. Like I just put it like five bucks into some random ones and they all went downhill. I but I guess the... Crazy. Isn't it crazy? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess... Um, that for the second thing, I'd like to ask you, like what initially got you into like taking the leap, so to speak, into like first buying silver as an investment and kind of like, what was your thought process at that time? Um, I would say, so it was a combination of you talking to me about it at work mm -hmm. and doing a little bit of, I guess, research on my own and I don't know. It just, it felt safe. I guess that's like something, something flipped in that I was like, no, this is, this is a safe investment. And, um, I don't know. It also something flipped too, where it was like, I'm buying money with money. I'm not just 
buying silver. I don't know if that makes sense, but it wasn't yeah. comprehending, I guess, at first that it was like still money. You know, it just seemed like a weird, a weird purchase. I don't know, a weird way to invest. And then all of a sudden it was, it was like something clicked. And I was like, well, you're essentially buying a better way to hold your money because yeah. the money that I had sitting in my safe was actually losing value. And somehow something clicked that cash was not the best way to to store my money anymore. Well, yeah. some of it. Yeah. Um, th that seems to be kind of across the board, like something I hear from stackers is like when they, there was like a point, I know for me, it was the, my, my first like purchase I made of silver bars. Like I was hooked at, it was five ounces and 20 grams. Um, and I was just hooked after that. And, you know, I researched it before and like understood the fundamentals, but there's something about actually holding it that that makes something click so i uh, kind of on that topic like your first um like couple like small i guess your first couple purchases and just oh, i don't know if we touched on this so you've been stacking for less than a year like you'd yep. I'd say like seriously like stacking seriously probably around eight months i would say okay perfect so i it's great to get this view because like i can kind of think back to when i started stacking and you know for people in the audience i'm assuming most of the people that listen to this are gonna be, be stackers maybe some new people maybe we can you know we'll see yeah. um yeah in the comments uh let us know if you've been stacking for a long time or if you're relatively new uh but anyway like you know, when I started stacking, that was back in like 2015, 2016. So just the whole climate was different. So even if I look back into my thought press process, the fundamentals were still the same, but it, it things were going like a lot differently. So it's very interesting to, to take a look into that. So I guess, you know, you had said prior to stacking, you thought it was kind of like an old school, like old people type type deal. Um, yeah. and then once you started making like your first couple purchases, it, it clicked then, or did it take a while to accumulate, you know, um, I don't know, let's just say, for example, uh, 15 ounces or something for it to click, or did it click pretty, pretty soon? No, I, it, cause the first couple I, I actually bought off you and it mm. was, I don't know, it was just more like, Ooh, look at this dog on this coin. Like I, I still didn't really quite understand what I was buying. And yeah, I mean, I just, you know, I, I really did. I really didn't know what I was doing. And I would say it was around when I got my five ounce bar at spot price and yeah. holding that, that, yeah, that, that was really cool. That was really cool. And I would say that's honestly when I got hooked on it. And that's yeah. when I wanted to start just learning more and um, I don't know when exactly I, cause I, I didn't even understand the difference between like sovereign coins and rounds. Like yeah. I kind of thought they were all the same thing cause they were round in shape, yeah. you know? So I didn't even understand like, oh no, these sovereign coins are from the government, you yeah. know, like, so just learning even bait, like super, super basic stuff. Cause I, I did not understand any of that. And looking yeah. back, you, you offered me some sovereign coins and, I do recall saying, mm, those are boring. You know, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted one with animals on them. And, you know, I, I really had no idea at, at the very beginning. And that was yeah. probably like a year ago, maybe a yeah. little over a year ago. So it's funny to look back now, but. You know. No, it, it definitely is. Like, I, I, I know, especially when I look back at like my first, especially like my first year of stacking and especially like the six months, the, the first six months I was stacking, like I, I, you know, I did plenty of research. I watched YouTube videos, like I knew the fundamentals, um, but like, if I could go back, would I have done things way differently? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, that's, that's how you learn. I think everybody that gets into stacking, uh, physical metals, uh, makes some mistakes because it's, it's just different than, than other types of investments as it's a, like a commodity you physically hold. Whereas everything else is essentially like, oh, like line go up or down on computer yeah, or number go up or down on computer where there's a lot more uh, with with physical commodities to 
especially you know silver and gold um so i you kind of answered a bit of this about when you started stacking on a regular basis basically like when you started stacking like when you said like you got that five ounce bar and you started getting more serious into it um did you did your pro thought process shift a bit at that time or was it more like you already understood the fundamentals and you were just um getting further into further into it you know i still don't think i even understood really the fundamentals i got that five ounce bar pretty mm. much because you told me it was a good deal. I mm. still did not understand the concept of spot price premiums, maybe what's um, what's like a good premium. Cause now mm. I'm like waiting for the emails to get the 99 cent over spot. And I'm like, yeah. yes, <laughs> but before I like, that was just not even a part of my thought process when buying silver to be honest. Okay. So I was really getting influenced by, you know, you, some stuff I was reading online. I was not making my own, I guess, decisions. It was just kind of like, well, this person's saying it's smart. So I guess this is what I'll do. But now I understand. Yes. Yeah, silver at it, spot price. Woo. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. It, it sounds almost like it was more of like a gut feeling which yeah that's a good way to put it like intuitively this felt right whereas cryptos it just did not it did not feel right yeah which i think is is something i i'd like to explore in like a future episode and, and kind of the psychology of that but i think historically for you know the past uh, all of human history why silver and gold have been money i i think there's something there that people just by intuition understand that it, it's valuable I, I really think there's something to that yeah, um yeah. so <laughs> i guess when you look back at like before you started stacking and your outlook on like finance and saving money and and all of that like when you look back to that and you look back to or and then you look to how you view those things now has that been like a radical shift in how how you view money i guess oh yeah and um you know even also learning more just about i guess the inflation that's happening and how unsecure the u.s dollar is yeah. it's it feels very unknown um what's gonna happen and i can't you know i can't really under or uh, put put into words what I what I hear you guys talk about because it is a little bit more advanced. But um, I I just yeah maybe it is just like a gut feeling and part of what I'm hearing and it's I it's just it does not look good and silver and gold it just feels like and precious metals feels like a safe a safe spot to have to have my money and it's uh it's a good savings because like I said before just having money stashed in a safe to me, it just feels like it's losing value as the years progress, as opposed to putting it into, you know, silver or gold and actually yeah. watching it increase in value. So something, something clicked and it's fun. Also, I enjoy it. I love getting it in the mail and opening up the package and yeah, unlike a stack too, it's something you can physically hold, which I think yeah. is exciting too. Yeah. So you actually get, you get the thing that you're buying, which is cool. Yes, yes, yeah. It's yeah. I, I know getting getting packages from bullion dealers or 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 going to a, like a local shop or whatever. It, but especially like the getting the packages, it feels like every every week or every other week, however often one buys, that it's like it's like christmas like every it week is. even th even though you know what you're getting i'm like um, well sometimes i buy like random half ounce coins yeah or it's like what am i gonna or like get? i got my first kookaburra and i was like Ooh. Yeah. like so sometimes i get coins i don't actually have mm -hmm. so that's that still keeps it like fresh and exciting like i i ordered my first 10 ounce bar too so i'm very excited for that to come in the mail and because i know oh, that's yeah. going to be a, a heavy boy Oh yeah, Hold, holding a ten ounce bar is uh, is very <laughs> good. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, so, 
like I guess now now that you've been stagging for a while like how often I guess do you do you think about like uh because I know for me it's literally every day um like how often do you think about like oh I want to get this oh I I like how often do you think about silver or gold or you know precious metals in general or things you want to get like is it is it something that you think about pretty often yeah um you know, when I first started stacking, we'll just say eight months ago, I would think about it every now and then. <clears throat> Sometimes I would just honestly for like forget about it for a couple days, weeks, yeah. whatever. Now I I'm pretty much checking every day. Um, <laughs> maybe not watching videos every day, but mm. at least once a week, maybe twice a week. Um, mm. Watching videos, a um, couple Reddit threads. Um, in the, the one club or whatever the name is, that one's fun. Uh, the silver but, DJ yeah, club. I would say it's, yeah, it's about every day now. I'm at least checking the price. Sometimes I'm even browsing bullion sites, making fake mm. carts that, you know, yeah. that are yeah. constantly changing too. So yeah, it's definitely <laughs> yeah. much more frequent now. And I don't know. I just, I want to learn more about it that's mm -hmm. the thing. Like I actually want to, it's not like, Oh, well, if I'm going to invest in it, I have to learn or I should learn. Now I just want to, I'm like, tell me everything. I just want to know. So, yeah. You know, it, it's funny. Cause I, I've kind of described it this way for a long time is like, you know, stacking is almost like an addiction, but <laughs> you're like addicted to making a good financial decision. Yeah. That's, <laughs> Yeah, that's that's so true. That is so true. Yeah. You know, in my opinion, nothing in this is financial advice. We're not financial advisors. Read the description. But um, yeah, but it yeah, is. it is um, taking it out. Some of it looking at it every now and then you're just like, ooh, yeah. it's fun. Mm -hmm. And no, I, I know you're you're very big into silver and that you have a little bit of gold. So I guess kind of, I know for me personally, I started, I was only really stacking silver for probably the first year I was stacking. And then I kind of got branched out into gold, probably near the end of that first year. Um, so what is your um, perception of silver versus gold uh, right now, I guess, in your kind of stacking journey? Um, and yeah, I guess what what's your opinion on that right now, especially with gold uh, spot price being at like crazy, like nominal all time yeah. highs. Um. Well, first off, I I would love to have a lot of money to buy a lot of gold, but mm -hmm. yeah, I am definitely more into silver. Um. Now that yeah, pretty much it was like basically like two weeks ago, I wanted to start getting into gold, and I could see myself moving into the gold within the next couple months, like mm -hmm. having, having some bigger pieces. But, um, for me, I wanted to get my silver stack up, um, and hopefully use some silver to trade in for gold, just because gold is very expensive. And recently it did hit an all time high. So I'm kind of <laughs> mm -hmm. at the moment, but I just want to see what happens with silver and, you know, I, from the things I've heard, usually when gold goes up, silver's kind of supposed to follow suit and it hasn't. So, or it hasn't yet, yeah. but I'm kind of waiting for that big jump. Um, so, and I don't know what that's going to be. I've heard many different predictions from different people and I am in no position to make a prediction, but I've heard a lot of good things. So yeah. Right now, I just want to continue to get my silver stack up just a little bit more. Um, mm. I want to see what happens with both gold and silver. And yeah, maybe maybe uh, in a couple months, I'll I'll have my hands on on some bigger gold pieces. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think part of that, too, yeah. is like if I were making, let's say, five times more money than I make now, like if my income were like way, way more um i would be getting more gold but uh especially you know fractional gold the premiums are super high whereas yeah. silver silver is just more accessible to the average person you know there are people out there that can go out and buy 
three ounce or even just a one ounce gold coin and it's not it would be like us buying silver or whatever but i don't have that kind of money well right in silver i can space out my purchases and still get mm. kind of a lump sum whereas with gold i would basically be buying it feels like one gold piece whether coin bar whatever and that would kind of just be it. Like I'd get it at that price point and just kind of hope it goes up because I don't have the money to just kind of keep to dollar putting cost in. average. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's also why I like silver. And because yeah. I can, you know, I can get more of that. So yeah. Yeah. And also um, just to kind of piggyback off what you were saying about, you know, you know, price, at least recently, price of uh, the spot price of silver has kind of followed gold up. A little bit you know they've kind of both gone up but silver hasn't gone up by much which in my opinion and in many other people's opinions the price of silver is manipulated or at the very least it is extremely undervalued um so yeah i i, I think silver personally is a very good buy uh yeah and most of my stack even though i've diversified into obviously gold and i i platinum as well the majority of my stack is in silver but um i guess you know when when i started stacking you know that was back in like 2015 2016 which it was a different time than i guess when you started and currently so how is the the recent state of the economy with inflation and the increased cost of living and just, I guess, the current administration in the U.S., we don't have to get too political, but uh, how has all of that kind of impacted your views on stacking and like how much you stack or how much you should have, like, or if at all? Yeah, I, yeah. Um, well, inflation is definitely making it harder on the wallet. I mean, I would love to buy a lot of silver given what's going on right now but um yeah i definitely make silver a priority um you know, how do i say this without getting too political <laughs> um basically i just don't i don't have a lot of trust in the the current um administration <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, and to me, this, this feels very safe and secure and something that they can't get their hands on because, you know, even, uh, keeping money in the banks too, it just, it feels, it just doesn't feel like the right thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So. And then, yeah, I mean, you know, technically, you know, if you have your money in the bank, it, it's, suppose you know but you're still keeping your money in dollars which are being inflated away plus cost of livings going up and, well, and you know you know some things that have happened recently where people have tried to go into their bank of americas and you know they try to withdraw money and they tell them they don't have it and it's that that won't happen if you have your silver and gold in a safe you know yeah, at your yeah. so yeah. it just it feels safer like, I, I just feel very safe and secure with this investment. And yeah, given the current state of today's economy, it is not, it's not looking bright. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, we, we kind of at this point need dollars to function in the world, but it's like, I, I want to have as much of my capital outside of, outside of that, in my opinion, like pretty much a scam Ponzi scheme as possible. Um, yeah. Well, and I have mixed feelings about so because I'm like, I want it to go up. But at the same time, being a new stacker, I kind of want it to just hang where it's at. Maybe even, you know, maybe even go down. I'm sorry. Yeah. But just so I can get my stack up and and then we can really mm. see that take off. But oh, yeah, you know, I, I would never, love... never gonna say no to a <laughs> to an increase. So, yeah, I, you know, I. I would love to see silver drop to $10 an ounce for a while so I can just stack up. But, that you know, I, I think even if the paper price fell to that, I bet we would still be buying at the same price because premiums would just jump. You know, you, the premiums you'd be paying, you'd still be pay, like spending like 20 bucks an ounce with how premiums have decoupled. Because that's something that's a lot different. Like when I 
started stacking and this kind of happened around like 2021 or, tw- or 2020 2021 around that time where um the spot price and the actual price of silver um kind of decoupled because there were still premiums when i started stacking you know eight years ago or however long it was but i mean on american silver eagles it was like a two dollar premium on generic rounds it was maybe a dollar sometimes less of a premium uh 90% silver you could get for like melt price or sometimes under like it was crazy um and now i think you know they're manipulating the market pushing the price down but uh the world still has to go around so the people that actually use the physical thing have to make up for it in premiums yeah can i ask you a question maybe this will help yeah. if you have some new stackers what controls the like the premium so how come some years it's 99 cents and then other years it's five bucks um for the same it yeah so it's kind of i'm trying to think of how to like concisely explain this so it's basically like everybody has to make money you know the the people that mine the silver have to make a profit the people that um refine the silver have to make a profit the people that uh, is wholesale the silver to dealers have to make a profit the dealer has to make a profit manufacturers like i make hand poured silver like i you know i have to set a price point where i make a profit and i'm paying a premium when i buy my silver and you know it's and the the spot price is you know controlled by by the big commodities exchanges like the new york comex or the uh the london bullion metals whatever it's called lbma um and various other commodities exchanges where that they're trading like futures contracts and it's all this bs like um like wall street etf stuff where as like on the ground people dealing with the physical metals it's like the price has been tamped down but to get the physical thing it's like you still need to pay for what it's actually kind of worth. And even with those premiums, in my opinion, it, it's still undervalued. And, and a lot of dealers that I've talked to kind of agree with that sentiment. And yeah, feel free to ask me any questions um, you want during this whole thing. But uh, I never thought that, at least when I first started stacking, like I never thought that premiums on silver would be like this. Like... <laughs> I, it was such a like shock to the system. I I don't know if like when premiums kind of went crazy, I kind of thought it was going to be a temporary thing at first and it stuck around for years. So I don't know if, uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens in the upcoming years. Um, That's why I look out for those emails now, now that I really have gained an understanding, like I want my dollar to go a long way. So I look for those 99 cent over spot, mm -hmm. you know, because it is, it's just, I'm trying to get weight now. So that's where I'm at. I, 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 I think that leads into, to something I wanted to ask you that it seems like most stackers are like there's a spectrum that on like one side it's like i'm a stacker for weight i only care about weight and on the other side is like like i am a collector i'm a precious metals enthusiast i want the numismatic nice looking ones and it seems like most people fall somewhere on that spectrum um where where would you say like you fall on that spectrum and maybe how that has evolved over the time you've been stacking uh within the past like less than a year yeah, when I uh when I first started, I like I loved the lunar series. Um so yeah, it was more of like a maybe a a collector's um vibe we'll call it, where I just wanted the cool looking coins. I wanted the ones mostly with animals on it. Yeah. Um I'm trying to think of what else I bought earlier on. Oh yeah, the um the half ounce ones with like the battleships. There was a um, battleship one. The, um, yeah. the battle, the coral sea, half ounce, perf mint. Yeah. So yeah. for me, it was. It was just more the ones that looked cool, simply. Mm-hmm. Um, and then 
once I kind of learned what the lunar series was, I was like, I want to collect this. Yeah. And I do. I have the lunar series three set. They're mm-hmm. awesome. Um, I love I those. <laughs> but as I evolved into, I guess, a more serious stacker, now I am, now I really want weight. That's what I'm pretty much doing right now. So, like, if you had to Best give me your... my book. Okay. So if you had to give yourself like a percentage or like, or like a, like, what would you say? Like, if you, would you say you're like 85% like I'm for weight and then the rest is like, I'm like a collector. Um, I would say maybe like 80% weight, 20% collector. Okay. Whereas you were mostly into the collecting stuff when you first started. Yep. Yeah, I oh. think the first one was like the five ounce bar that was anything like mm-hmm. generic. And yeah. even that, like it was exciting because it was heavy and it was big, but I was still kind of like, well, this is kind of boring. Like, look at the animals. So yeah. it wasn't in yeah, it wasn't until I got a little bit deeper and I was like, oh, understanding, like I said, this basically the spot and the premiums, like what what that is and mm. what that is. And um, yeah, now I would say I I buy for weight now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I think you and I both share a love for Perth mint stuff. Uh, I'm I'm sure many people can relate. Uh, The lunar series, the kookaburras. I I love kookaburras. Um, All of that. Like, so I guess like, I I did want to talk a little bit about, um, like what are and maybe we can split this up into sections like um as far as like some of your favorite things to stack maybe we'll we'll talk about like um like so, we'll talk sovereign coins then bars rounds and then like numismatic and collector's coins maybe put hand pours in there so i guess for like sovereign coins like uh, what are like some of your favorites or things that you think are, are good buys for you personally or that fit into your stack and, and kind of why? And I'll kind of give my answers too as we go through this. Yeah, I, I like the I like the Silver Eagles. I like the Britannias. Um, I, I think that's what I have the most of. Um, probably those two. And why it was solely because the queen died and mm-hmm. I thought it would be a good idea to buy. Oh, and the, um, the Australia one with her years on it too. So that was more why I was buying those ones. I know okay. that's not silver Eagles, but I wanted the ones with her face on it. The maple yeah. leaf too. That was just, I, I don't know. I think I maybe thought, well, she died. So these are going to be worth something mm-hmm. beginner, you know, like I, I, I don't know. Yeah, but I really well, thought those were going to be of value, and I have um, some of the because they the the Britannias came out with three. It was mm-hmm. the king with the crown, the king without the crown, and the queen, and I I just wanted those. Like I thought that would be a, a good set. I I you yeah. know I I don't know new new no, set I guess. Yeah, I mean definitely for I, I kind of did the same thing with the Britannia's um I you know I have some in airtight capsules that are um the, the 20 I believe yeah the, the 2023s with the queen and with the king so in the future I could maybe sell them as sets um and the Canadian the- ones with with the dates on them um and also I I don't know I I don't keep up on the, the damn royal family or whatever but I heard something about King Charles being sick or something so if yeah. if he only had like let's just say like you know i'm not wishing death on anyone but if he does pass away like two years from now and he's only on the coins for three years those could be like key date coins potentially where 20 years from now it's going to be a crazy premium on them See, that was kind of my thought process, and I wasn't sure if that was like an accurate one or not. Mm. So that's good to hear that. Yeah, you know, that, other that's, people have that same thought process. Yeah, that's kind of that that speculation thing where it's like, well, maybe I, I will see, and but at yeah. the end of the day, they're still 
one ounce silver like sovereign coins so it's still going to be good to have whether it, it pops off in numismatic value or not and of course the eagles like i would say i believe that is the most popular silver coin in the world if i i believe that is the case uh definitely in the u.s uh you know the premiums are higher on it but i've i've sold eagles at at crazy premiums too um, so you can get that back if you sell at the right time, you get way more back if you sell at the right time. Um, yep. but that's uh, for any Americans out there, that's probably like, you know, you, you should have, you should have some of those. I, I don't think I really know anybody currently that like, doesn't have any Eagles, at least no Americans. Yeah. Um, Oh, I, I like them all, but yeah, you, you definitely got to have some Eagles, of course. Yeah. That's like the, the, the big, big coin that like every coin shop wants, or even like, like pawn shops that will pay you like nothing or like, you know, they, maybe there's some good pawn shops out there, but like, even they will give you like a dollar over spot for Eagles. <laughs> so like there's something something to that i mean yeah. for me for for sovereign coins like just like the when we're talking like britannia's um you know eagles maples i i like britannia's i like eagles of course like eagles are good to have especially being american or even just being in north america period um I would say right now I really like the maples because, and I've always liked Royal Canadian mint stuff, but ever since 2018 with their mint shield technology, like I have not had a single uh, maple or any other Canadian coin minted after 2018 that has ever milk spotted. That's so, interesting. I, I would have to look because you're right. Some of my like Australian Perth mint ones have started to milk spot. Some of my Britannias. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about them. I would have to go look. That's that's I never like paid attention to that. I would yeah. Have to go that's a good point. Yeah, it seems like the the Perth mint, the Lunar series and the Kookaburras, none of those have ever milk oh, spotted no. in those my are experience. Gorgeous. I just meant like the the kangaroos. The kangaroos. Like I, yeah. Kangaroos. Sorry, I should have specified. But yeah, oh, so, yeah, some of my kangaroos have milk spotted a little bit. But no, the Lunar series 3, those are shiny. Those are those are beautiful. Those look yeah. great still. Yeah. Um so it, I guess as far as like um like generic generic bars and, and rounds um like what uh, i mean that's you know a good thing for weight but is there anything specific i guess that you look for um or like what what do you like to stack kind of in that realm or is it pretty much just like oh the cheapest thing that i can find that i also kind of like the look of yeah right now it's definitely the the cheapest thing but if i if i got to choose i would want one ounce bars for generic yeah. but sometimes those aren't the cheapest option and mm -hmm. right now i i find the best deal and i i go with that yeah yeah the the one ounces are definitely it's definitely easier to sell one ounce bars than 10 ounce or, or one kilo that's what bars. i've heard too and so mm -hmm. it's just it's all around and i don't know i i like the i like the little one so yeah um, it, it's nice to have a like a bar tube as well or if you get in plastic where they come in those big sheets if you buy yep. like eight or more or whatever the case may be for one ounce like minted bars i really like like asahi and like sunshine mint uh, yeah or sunshine minting whatever it's called but yeah i mean there's only really so much we can say about generic bars and rounds yeah um like as far as hand pours like i i know you you bought some of my hand pours plug yeah, myself yeah. here um Get some cg bullion hand pours yes everybody do that um but aside from that like um are you what what's your feeling about hand pours because i know like certain things like atlantis mint um you can sell in private sales which atlantis mint is pretty popular and then they weren't around for a while i guess they started back up recently that's just one example but how do you feel about hand poured bars yeah i actually i don't have too too many hand poured stuff but um i i like it um, the Atlantis mint is some of the, the, what are they? Maybe 
10 gram. Is that a thing? They're, yeah. they're little. Yeah. yeah. They're 10 grams. So I, I do, I do have, uh, some, some of those and yeah, I mean, I, I like them. It doesn't excite me as much as some of the coins I'm going to be yeah. honest, but they're, they're cool. Yeah. I like mm -hmm. them. I definitely think they're an important, um, piece of the, or, or of, of someone's stack or like of my stack. Like I mm -hmm. really do want to like diversify, yeah. um, try and get bars, coins, rounds, some hand pours, like mm -hmm. some of your stuff. Yeah. So yeah, no, and that, that looks cool. So I agree. There's, there's that like fun aspect to it where like, there are times where I just like, am looking at like parts of my stack. Um, and I, or like I take pictures of it or like, like whatever, yeah. like, it's just fun especially when we get into like the numismatic coins, like which like numismatic, semi-numismatic, collector's coins, whatever you want to call it. Like, so you said like Lunar Series 3, you're collecting those. Yep. Um, is there... I think that's of my like collection. Yeah, I would say that's about the only like collector's pieces I'm okay. going going for right now. Because I have some Lunar Series 2, just like loose ones. Yeah. I even think I have maybe one Lunar Series 1 coin. I'm oh, not okay. sure, to be honest. But okay. that was when I did not know what mm -hmm. I was doing. So okay. I have just random years, random. None of mm. them really fit or in order. But um, starting 2020, I do have I do have all the Lunar Series 3 ones nice yeah i and i was kind of the same way when i started getting into stack initially i was collecting uh kookaburras so like okay. the 20 2014s 2015s 2016s 2017s and i would have like multiples of each one because i wanted like at least one for myself and then i could sell one if i needed to and then i would branch out into like the royal canadian so like i think it, maybe it depends on on the person but i know for me as i went along it's like well i also want the uh royal canadian mint wildlife series stuff oh and i also want the queen's beast uh, stuff and like where you have to like narrow in yes yeah, i i totally yeah. get that because um my boyfriend has the next gen series mm -hmm. the two ounce and oh, yeah. i wanted to buy those and i'm like all right calm down like focus <laughs> You know, you can't, you can't buy it all or yeah. at least I can. So I had to almost pick and choose. And I also wanted, like I said, to diversify. I wanted mm. some hand poured. I want bars. I want round sovereign coins. I want different weights. And, you know, I don't have too many fractionals um, mm. or like the, is that, is that how you say it? Like the 90 yeah. percent? Oh, oh, the people it, you say that? Call it junk silver constitutional silver or just not okay yep so i don't have too much like junk silver mm -hmm. um that's something else i wanted to start mm -hmm. buying as well yeah um but yeah yeah i i think it's good to and like i definitely echo your sentiment about how you kind of when it comes because there are some people that are strictly like collectors they're not really stacking for weight you know i i think most people that have silver are not strictly collectors but those people are out there where they just collect certain series of collectible coins they're not really interested in 10 ounce bars or one ounce. they're not interested in bars period you know nope. um but i think that's a pretty small amount of people but it, you know i think it's very good to have your stack diversified but yeah i'm uh, you know if i were like a multi multi-millionaire i would be collecting a lot more but you do have to narrow yeah. it down to, to kind of dollar cost average where it's like hmm in the long run yeah this would be cool to have like all these different series but i kind of have to narrow it down so i can stack weight as well not even right. getting into gold um exactly. which i know you haven't really gotten too into gold um and then I did want to ask you, because I, I know you haven't, you have a little bit of gold, but I haven't really got that much into it. Um, and you, you said that, you know, with it being at an all time high, you're not sure if you want to jump in at the moment. 
Um, but are, do you have any interest in like platinum bullion? Because I, I do stack some platinum, not a whole lot of it, but um, is that something that you are interested in at all? Maybe down the line. Um, I don't, yeah, I, I haven't really expressed, <clears throat> excuse me, too much interest recently. Um, Cause that, that also is, it's kind of expensive too, but maybe, uh, you know, maybe I'll start learning about that too. And maybe I can play the ratio game with platinum first. I, I just, I, I know nothing about platinum. So yeah. pretty much my knowledge is in silver and a sliver in gold. Okay. Um, yeah, but platinum. I definitely want to get into gold soon for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, gold and silver are like the classics. Platinum is is like a whole different market, and it also has a a much smaller market capitalization. But I, in my opinion, I think platinum's undervalued right now. Um, okay. But who knows what's going to happen with that market? Can't predict the future. Um, yeah. So, I guess um, where where do you see the future? Because, you know, I, you know me, like I'm always trying to spread the word about stacking silver. It's like, there's a meme, like maybe I can put it on screen, screen if I can find it, where it's like literally no one silver stackers. I'm trying to help you motherfuckers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah. I guess since, since you are uh, a bit, younger than I am you're probably more in tune with young you know like people that are in their very like early 20s or just, like just hitting adulthood so you might have a better perspective on this as far as like what the future of stacking is gonna look like as those people get older because I you know I have met some people um that that stack, you know, especially online, you meet a lot of people that are younger and getting into it younger. Um, I, I mean, it probably isn't until a certain age that people are seriously thinking about finances anyway. But I'm just curious on your thoughts on kind of like the the older, the oldest of Gen Z and like maybe the youngest of millennials, even as those people get older, like I, I'm just curious where you think that's going to go and how the culture of stacking might change. And I know you've, you've only been into it for like, you know, less than a year or whatever, but I, I think it's an interesting question. I'd like to hear kind of your input on it. Yeah. And like culture, what, what do you mean by like, cult? cause maybe I'm not like quite in the silver culture yet. Oh, okay. Like, like, I guess it's kind of like, right. You know how at the beginning of the interview, how you said you kind of viewed it as like, old, like an older fashion kind of thing, which I guess in some okay. sense it is, okay. but how it's, you know, the, the baby boomers are like getting old and those are like the people that own most of like the coin shops and stuff. And like, so it's going to be like new, like a new generation of people coming in and kind of taking more positions in the whole precious metal space and especially you know listening to your podcast it seemed you know you talk about early adulthood and it just seems like you're more in tune with that kind of generational culture than I am um so I'm just curious like how you think that might evolve maybe it's kind of an odd question but like even just throw your best guess I, I'm honestly very curious to hear what you have to say on that yeah well uh I from my experience at least to me it seems like there's just no understanding the few people I've tried to talk to about this it, it's kind of felt like maybe how you felt talking to me like there is just a barrier um there is just no understanding um and I think you know maybe Gen Z and the millennials like people want to spend their money on different things even though, you know, silver is money, I think people just don't, they just don't understand. And I think it's important um, kind of to spread the word and keep being persistent because I wouldn't be a stacker if you didn't, you know, keep teaching me and approaching me and just, hey, trying to let me know the importance of it. And yeah. um, I think that's really what it's gonna, it, you know, I think word, word of mouth and being a, being a trustworthy 
you know, like for my friends, I feel like they can trust me. I'm like, no, you know, like this, this, this is a good idea. Um, but yeah, I think it's word of mouth. That's probably the way it's best gonna, I, I don't see people fi finding this themselves. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because I, I don't know what would have happened, but I definitely wouldn't have started stacking when I did if it wasn't for a coworker of mine who talked to me about it. And, you know, I had like my grandma had given me some like proof American silver eagles when I was a kid. And it was just like, you know, I knew it had value. But it wasn't until, you know, we'd be out on SIG breaks and he'd be like, oh, do you do any investing? Do you invest in silver? And he'd talk to me about silver. And that kind of made me do some research into it. Um, and then I eventually bought, you know, my first, like my own first purchase. And I got really into it. But I did a lot of research beforehand as to the fundamentals of it and stuff. But it was, it just took somebody talking to me about it and i think also a good thing which is why places like uh on reddit like silver dgen club or the kind of stacking community on twitter uh in general and on there's one on instagram as well like those spheres and also like uh wall street silver on um on reddit specifically um are good communities because it it helps to have like people that you can talk to like your friends about like oh dude did you see the new kookaburra <laughs> or like yeah right <laughs> that's and so just, true yeah because like there's stuff like for example that that you have um that i don't that it's like dude i want to see that and vice versa or it may, might inspire me to get it it's because it is like almost like a weirdly social thing of like because it's so awesome like silver is amazing yeah. um, and all the different forms it can come in um and, and just the differences in people's stacks you know like um like tubs who, who you know like he yeah. stacked a lot of um like monarch precious metal stuff which i didn't have very much of some of okay. the more high high premium stuff and it kind of got me into but it was just cool to see um, and be like, hey, dude, do you, I like, I'll trade you this for this and, and yeah. all of that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. And I think, I think word of mouth is a big thing. Um, so I did want to ask you, because since we're on the, the topic of that, like, what do you think, like, as somebody who has kind of recently gotten into, it, I know you said like persistence and like somebody you trust, but I guess, especially for like the younger generation, um, and as well as people in general, like, what do you think the best ways, like, what would be the best, like, sales pitch to get, like, as younger people, especially, to at least take a look into stacking? That's a good question. Yeah, um, I know that's like a the trillion dollar question. I think... Um, first thing that came to my head, cause this is partly what helped it click for me. Um, you know, if you basically told someone, Hey, you know, if you have a thousand dollars in an envelope and you stick it up in your closet, um, two years down the line, that thousand dollars is not, it's not going to be able to, or it's not gonna have the same purchasing power as it did two years prior and my, like, it's going to yeah. decline. And if you bought silver or gold, that thousand dollars could potentially turn into 1100, 1200, 1300. Um, I don't know how you combat the bank argument. Cause that was another one. Cause you know, it's like, well, you put your money in a bank, you still get some interest in that. Like that's, that's gotta be better than this. And mm -hmm. um, that's a really good question. A sales pitch. Yeah. I mean, I think explaining like the, the, the thousand dollars would be good and um yeah i don't know i don't know yeah it that's is a really those... good question i would have to think about that yeah i would have it, to think about that because it's something that i think about and maybe maybe like memes like if, if silver could somehow go viral like become yeah, like yeah especially for for the younger generation that would actually get through to be honest yeah meme, if you want to get gen z's attention yeah like that I'm, might I'm, help them understand yeah like I'm, I'm just imagine like 
the Chinese Communist Party would never let this happen. But if there was like a TikTok trend that was like stack silver, <laughs> the stack <Yeah>. and silver <laughs> challenge. <laughs> yeah. No, well, instead it's like vandalize your school. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, or weird dances and all that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those, those are the TikTok trends, at least for like... It's just not that's not my thing though I, I don't even have tiktok to be honest I'm yeah i don't here. i don't either I don't it. it's it's literally chinese like electronic warfare like psychological warfare that's a whole different topic though but yeah um, i'm definitely connected with people my age but there's parts where there's there's definitely a bit of a disconnect like some stuff mm -hmm. like i'm not as tech savvy as some might think i know i have a podcast and but I'm really not. So, yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm kind of the same way. So I guess just really one more question. Uh, well, I guess two more. You'll see what I mean. Um, but this is kind of just a thought experiment I just thought of really is like, let's say you just had unlimited money to get whatever you wanted, like what would some things like that you can't necessarily afford right now or that you'd have to save up for a long time or like you can't justify the premiums like if that was all off the table like what would you go for lunar series gold i would buy probably well if unlimited money yeah, what's the well, biggest gold coin you can get because i would probably yeah. do that in all <laughs> lunar series yeah like uh the what i can't remember what it is how much it weighs like it's like a 1000 kilogram the big fill the yeah, thousand kilograms like gold bars just some massive gold bars that yeah that would be cool yeah I, I i yeah there's like all these like niche things you know there's like weird like coin like those i really have wanted one for a while those the it's the ukrainian sovereign coins but they're like dude they're they're like a hunt a hundred bucks or more for an ounce it's like yeah i'm not i'm not buying that that's too high of a yeah, premium but if i had unlimited crazy. money and i think they look really cool i'd stack them but um but yeah obviously unlimited money it's just like all right let me get all the gold for sale on earth yeah yeah still like yeah i would be so buying the monster boxes of silver and yeah i yeah. i would go nuts so I guess like, um, you know, we've been going for, uh, I believe about an hour. Um, so we can keep going a little bit if, if you want to, if you think of anything more, I think it's been a pretty good discussion so far. Um, yeah. anything else that you wanted to bring up or, or as somebody that's new to silver stacking, like any, like, I guess just general thoughts about how, how your outlook on money has changed or any, anything like that, really. Um, yeah, well, I can tell you this now that I've been a silver stacker, everything that I buy is in terms of silver now, and it's very annoying. So like if I buy a shirt, you know, in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, that was like an ounce and a half of silver, but yeah. you now I have this shirt. So, yeah. and that's, you know, and I, I have to live life, you know, yeah, but yeah. I just myself doing that more where mm. everything's in amounts of silver, um, so I guess I do think about it a lot, actually. Um, look on money. I don't know. It's kind of turned me into um, a saver, I would say. Like, I've definitely become, I would call myself a super saver. Because yeah. I never, I would say, was this adamant about putting money into something. And, yeah, it is. it is. It's, it's a borderline addiction. And... Yeah. I like spending money in general, so I'm glad that I kind of have an outlet to spend money and it's not going to waste, you know? Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I had the same experience, like, before I started stacking. Like, I even, even when I was working in a different career field and making a lot more than I do now, like, I could not save, save money to save my life, pretty much. Like, but once I started stacking, it was like, oh, like, like I had that need, whatever the expression is like, oh, you, my money's like my wallet's burning a hole in my pocket or my money's burning a hole in my wallet, whatever, whatever the people say. Um, 
where it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I literally will think of like my hourly pay rate and like how many ounces of silver or how many grams of gold am I going to get from this shift or like, yeah, when I buy things, it's like, oh, I could get this. And like you said, you got to live life. You know, it's not like I never buy coffee because or like right you know I don't buy but that is very relatable or just you know you're just like oh well that's an ounce of silver I could have you know and it's like come on don't don't be so hard but yeah I definitely do think like that more now yeah it, it definitely does help so um yeah any any I guess closing thoughts in general um well, not that anyone listening to this needs to hear it, but keep stacking silver. <laughs> let's let's drive these prices up. Let's yeah. change. And um, yeah, I am. I don't really have any advice or anything. Um, but I'm glad that I have gotten into this, and I kind of have like a little community now. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, it's it's a great way to save money, and I think it's it's a good potentially retirement fund too um it's just all whether you want to like pass it down you know if you have kids or something or Mm -hmm. or do it for yourself or even like in the shorter term too if you wanted to cash some in in 10 15 20 years depending on where it's at and you know you could you still money you know you you can use it and get it at any time so that's that's what i like about it and that's what i would encourage maybe people that aren't as into it, like, you know, it's still money. You can still liquidize it pretty much at any time, really. Like you just go to a coin shop or whatever and yeah, just keep stacking, keep stacking. Yeah. I like it. And I'm glad I'm a part of it. Yes, me too. And yes, everybody out there, tell your friends about stacking. Yeah, um, that's right. And- and anybody that's listening to this and somehow has got this far and has not started stacking, I implore you to look into it. But thank you so much, Lauren. And to let the audience know, I your links will be in the description. So the Logic and Vibes podcast, which I'll definitely at least put the YouTube thing should be on screen right now. But I'll put your YouTube, Spotify, and Podbean links in the description of this video and the youtube thing should be on screen right now note to myself editing this and um if you want to go because i know you did like a like a one sentence thing um when we started if you want to talk a little bit more about what your podcast is about um because i know i've I've listened to two episodes of it i believe um and it, it seemed like I, I, I thought it was pretty entertaining. So if you want to. Oh, well, yeah. And thank you for having me on tonight. I just wanted to say that, but yes, um, logic and vibes. It's a podcast. I do it with my best friend. Um, we've been best friends for 24 years, my whole life. And yeah, we just got the idea to do it one day. And um, it is, it's supposed to be fun, conversational. You know, you feel like, Hopefully you're in the room and you have two, two friends with you. And um, we try to keep it lighthearted. We try to make people laugh and we would definitely appreciate any input. Um, our goal with it is really to like build a community and hopefully like we can all, we can all be friends. You know, we, we want to get a discord going at some point and yeah, the podcast, we do different topics every week. Um, we start off kind of with like a, a weekly catch up with our lives and um, we hope it's entertaining and makes you laugh. And then each week, like I said, it's a different topic and we just dive into that with our personal experiences and maybe some things we've seen online. We ask each other questions. We try and pick each other's brains and um, we're not experts either. We're not given life advice. This is all just, you know, this is all for a good time, but if you hear something you like, of course, apply it to your own life. But we are not experts either. But so, yeah, come listen to us. Come check us out. Yeah. So yeah, if anybody listening, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, the links are in the description. And I'll also put your uh, your social media, like the Instagram. Um, I know you don't have a Twitter yet, but if you make one, send it to me. I'll put it in the description. Um, that will all be in the description. So guys, uh, check that out. And if you found any value from this video, I probably should have said it earlier in the video, like this video and subscribe.
and uh this is episode two of the very good ones cast or the very good cast or maybe just the gg bullion podcast still figuring out the marketing but thank you lauren so much for being on and yes uh, thank you lenny thank you for yeah. having me. it's my pleasure all right keep stacking everyone and have a very good one isn't a good day but bye bye bye